<laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. <laughs> <I just, laughs> What's going on? It's just totally... Uh, Russ is, is still with us. I hope he doesn't pass out. He look, You look really hot. <laughs> And not not like that, but like like <laughs> warm, <Yeah. laughs> like like sweating, kind of. That sounds yeah. bad too. I <laughs> the music's really loud in my headphones. This is what happens when we people send us free booze to drink on the show. <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. god! It gets out of control. Yeah. Oh my god. So what's going on, Russ? You doing all right? Oh man, totally loving life down here. Just smoke anywhere mostly. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy. That's good. That's good. Uh, we we have a new cocktail concoction. I'm on the fence about this one. This is not as good as the first one. Okay. By a landslide. Um, what did we do? We use what was the first one? The Florida rum. Now we're using Puerto Rican, or was it the other no, way around? No, we used Puerto Rican the first segment. This segment we're using the Florida. It's the Florida rum in honor of our our new friend Russ. We're using the Florida rum because Russ is from Florida, so we mix some Florida rum with. This uh, <coughs> flavored soda water. Oh, okay. So that explains why there's no... It says right on the can now that <laughs> I turn the can around. It says flavored soda water, no calories, no sugar. Um, and it is elderflower and vanilla seltzer. I kind of wish it had a little sugar in it, to be honest with you. Mm. I was expecting that. And we mixed that with the Florida rum. I did about three ounces to about half a can uh, to make these two drinks. So, uh, And I put a lime in it. For whatever that's worth and the glass uh, so this is from hammer and sickle actually uh oh. hammer and sickle icon uh flavored soda water it's really good it's really good i it just the the flavor is very subtle on the soda water um which i think excuse me and it's bubbly apparently too uh which i think helps uh still allow you to get some of that flavor of the rum yeah yeah in the cocktail it also cuts the rum though because if you've had the Florida it's, it's rum, it's very straight, water. It's, and it, it tastes it. too water. I think my complaint is it's too watery. So are we? Go, we're not going to break, and you're going to make a Doctor Stormy. We're this just, would be. We're going to roll with it. I, this <laughs> would, what do you see, want to do? I, I mixed it with too much because I thought the it, it was going to have more su- have sugar in it. I should have read the can. This is like a topper, right? Like you've mixed a cocktail with some fruit, like an old fashioned, and maybe you're just topping it with some soda water. Mm. I would top a cocktail with this. Okay. Or get some with some different flavors and use it as a topper for some mojito. Maybe a little soda water and some of the flavored, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. So you should have went with Dark and Stormy. Should have went with Dark and Stormy. No, we don't. No, that's we don't have any more limes. I no, used the one can, lime that we had. We'll, so. we'll, we'll make them after the show and we test a, it. <laughs> we're just gonna keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, <coughs> we got some work to do after the show, so we're gonna we're gonna do some work and. Uh, yeah, we're awesome. gonna do some sales calls and have some dark <laughs> stories. <laughs> yeah, a, I'm ready to go. So sticks of the week, sticks of the week. I smoked stuff and I don't remember what I smoked because I sucked at taking pictures of stuff this week and documenting in any way, shape, form, or fashion because I suck. Right. So it'll Russ. come to me as we do the segment, though. I'll think. Oh, I know what I did smoke because I found three boxes <laughs> apparently <laughs> of these in my humidor. Not one, not two, but three boxes of Tatuaje Noeas uh, are in my humidor. The God knows for how long they've been in there. Well, one of the box dates <laughs> is 2015. The other full box is 2014. And the other about half empty box is also uh, January of 2014, actually. Um, so, you know, those got om- no, almost, you know, four and a half, five years, of, four and a half years of age on them. And. They're deli- Did you smoke one that I gave? Did you smoke one I, I gave smoked you? one yesterday when you were doing your security show. So Delicious, right? Last night, yeah. I, yeah. I th- these things yeah. just get nothing but better with age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I don't know what the tipping point is where they start to fall off, but I, I, you can age these suckers for a long time. I want to say I've had some that have been aged longer than four years, and they were even more delicious. Mm. So I think these are going to reach uh, a, a crescendo. Is that what you call it in music? Joe crescendo, yes. and and then you start to go and down. then they start to go down. And when that crescendo hits, you want to be here in studio because I'm going to be giving them out to people to smoke them because <laughs> I can't <laughs> smoke two and a half boxes. Uh, well, I guess I could. Which is a never reason. mind. I'm not giving any more to anyone else ever. No, I'm just I'll kidding. Say, which is a reason if you're in town in uh, Warwick, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Friday, stop by the studio. Uh, 
you 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 might have some good sticks to 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 try out. There'll be a line <laughs> Friday morning. It'll be like the build a bear <laughs> line. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I get the stick, you know. It's okay. It's a good problem to have. So yeah, my uh, our offer still stands. If you're around the studio, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, stop by. If you need directions, email me at Joe H at StogieGeeks dot com. We'll get that to you. And then also, side note, Russ. Uh, later on today or tomorrow, email me the sticks that we speak about, and I'll put them up on the wiki for you. Absolutely, yeah. So they'll be no there. Problem. Okay. Well, Russ, you go first. All right. So last week I had the pleasure of uh, going back up to a little shop in East Providence for my brother's wedding and stuff like that, and I picked up a La Barba Purple. Mm-hmm. Translation, it's the beard. And I had an, a... Uh, robusto size, but turns out that Robert Caldwell and William Ventura put a lot of effort into a fledgling company way back in 2013. They went from Florida all the way down to the Dominican, and what they ended up doing was picking their hand rollers, finding the perfect blend, and you know what? They probably hit a home run on this one. The wrapper is a Habana by Elta Evuejo, Ecuadorian. And the binder was a Dominican Coro- Coroyo. Now the filler is Carbonell, which is kind of like a mixed transition between a Coroyo and a Habano. Wait, Creo- Creo- are you saying Criollo or Corojo? Corojo. Corojo. Gotcha. Don't worry, I've got okay. them wrong the first couple of times. It took me like a year. It took me like three years. You still get them wrong. What are you talking about? <laughs> Criollo. Yeah. yeah. Criollo. All right. So uh, these... Carbonell mixture is only in small batches mm. that this family's been producing for years, but gives this stick such a unique taste. And smoking this, I ended up getting hints of vanilla and then also just caramel, but all earthiness to it. And it was perfectly paired with a morning smoke mm. and a coffee, just dancing around in my mouth. And I smoked it for a good hour, just enjoying every minute of it. Uh, out on my back line, I got to see everything going on, golfers passing by, but overall this stick is just sugar, ginger, and medium smooth, and the draw was totally perfect. So I've actually had that. that. I've, I've actually had that too, Russ. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish up. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a straight box for me because I put my order in as soon as after I smoked it. So. Mm. Nice. What would you think of it? Yeah, I've actually had it uh, – I, I they, it's it's uh it's it's La Baba, right? La Baba? Yes. Yeah. It's a La Baba. Tony Bellotto. There's a purple. Right? There's Did I get a that purple. right? Tony Bellotto? Did I say that right? What? Tony Bellotto, right? Is the La Barba, right? Isn't it? <laughs> no? For what I'm I'm not following you on that. The dude that made the La Barba, no? Is that is that not his? It's it's Caldwell. Oh, it's Caldwell. It's Caldwell. Sorry. Yep, it's Caldwell. Um I thought Tony had something similar to that or something anyway there was there, there i don't know if it was tony there was there was there, there was a similar there was a similar there, there was a similar name it has like the little straight edge yeah yeah it has a straight edge this was more of a thinner straight edge the, the, the caldwell correct me uh i believe it comes and this is all i'm spitballing here it's got a purple wrapper which is the one we're talking about but then there's also a gray one uh the red blend was the one that they worked on first. Oh, okay, yeah, it was the red. So I've had the purple. I did not have the red yet. So we're, we're talking about the purple, which is the same one. Yeah, no. I Tony did. Tony Bellato's the uh the guy behind La Barbara Cigars. Okay. He he does it with uh with Caldwell. Okay. Is on, is on the team, but yeah, t- Tony's the the main guy behind that brand. Yeah. And then from there, uh when I had the Robusto, I I was I was picking it, it it's very interesting. Because I was picking up uh, what I kind of dubbed as uh, tobacco sweetness, right? And now what, what, what you're saying is you're actually getting some of the hints uh, and kind of estimating it and, and having it go a little bit more in depth. So uh, I like that. You know, it was, it was a great smoke. Uh, I, I didn't do a review of it yet. I'm going to have a couple. Uh, usually when they first, first come out, which... Uh, they came out here in the Northeast, I believe, probably like four or five weeks ago. So I did one. Yeah. I liked it. I did another one. Uh, and then I grabbed a couple more, and they're kind of sitting in my humidor, and I will get to them But um, as far as a stick of the week. But 
I would definitely give it a a very higher rating, higher than a fiver for sure. And you gave it a box worthy. Yes. There you go. It's just up. I hit my palate, and I got a bottle of Johnny Red just waiting to pair with it. Mmm, Johnny Red. I like Johnny Red. Yeah, it's all right. You don't. You know what do you I'm like? I'm a snob. You like yeah, cloths. Well, I'm snob, dude. <laughs> It's, it's, there's nothing more to say about that other than I'm a snob. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Johnny Red. I'm just, I'm a snob and I, and I don't drink it. Don't know how to transition from a snob, but. <laughs> <laughs> right? <clears throat> actually. What do you smoke? Actually, I'm. Uh, <clears throat> it's tough because any cigar I mention is going to be associated with that, but it's not. Okay, here we go. I had a uh, Lito Gomez small batch number five. Hmm. And the size was a Churchill. It is a six and three fourths by fifty-two. Uh, wrapper binder filler is all from the Dominican Republic. Uh, complexity, I on a scale of one to ten, I gave it an eight. Flavor and balance, I gave it a nine. Um, what's interesting about this cigar is they made two hundred and thirty-eight boxes, and they have a hundred and five cigars in each box. So it totals 25,000 cigars. Yeah, LT is pretty famous for that in some of their releases. They make gigantic boxes. Sure. Um, price point, I was actually shocked at the price point. But with that, if you want to uh, if you want to get a box, it's only uh, MSRP of $19.95. Well, <laughs> and, and typically the, the shop will purchase that and then sell them uh, individually. Yes, yeah. But, but uh, yes. I think they probably save... Uh, a little cost by putting that many in one box rather than making individual boxes and packaging them individually by putting them on the same box probably brings down the cost per cigar for the consumer less than what it normally would be because mm-hmm. they're just putting it in one big crate essentially yeah well I've they've wa- done their factory presses the same way mm-hmm. so it's just it's just their methodology doing that small batch. yeah like factory presses come in the, like a wooden these wooden trays i want to see the trays hold 10 cigars and they slide into like a big case, and there's you know like fifty or a hundred or whatever in uh, in a case. I gotcha. Makes it hard for the retailer to face it though. Yeah, yeah. Um, when 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 I lit it up, strong flavors of earth had some leather in there. It did turn uh, pretty much creamy with a mix of cocoa for sure. Uh, when you retro hail it, when you retro hail it, you do get a a, a, a slight hint of black pepper stays consistent throughout the stick uh awesome smoke um towards the end i got a little bit more of a woody pepper type flavor but let me tell you something um it's fight chuck norris if you yeah if you were if you were to purchase these individually you would you would be in that twenty dollar price point um it was amazing. I always usually tell a story when, when, when I give a higher rating. So I walk into the shop and I says, what's the deal with these? He goes, well, he goes, uh, I got these 2007 versions. And I got the 2009. I says, well, which one's better? And the shop owner, and both of them are priced at that same price point. And the shop what's owner, the price point on those? Uh, about 19.95. I paid 20, 23 something because it was Massachusetts. But I don't know if I smoked the number five. <clears throat> I smoked the number one. Yep. Small batch. Mm-hmm. I smoked the number six, <clears throat> which I read. The number six I rated box split. Was six the... Um, the number one, one was Fight Chuck Norris. Mm-hmm. What, did you read this one? Was this your Fight Chuck Norris? Yes. Okay. Yep. The small batches are awesome. They tend to be really strong. Yeah. It, 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 and, and it's really, really strong. It's and, still and, even... And, and, and it's strong on the the regular hail, I guess you can say, right? When, when you smoke the regular it. hail. As opposed to the retro hail. The regular <laughs> hail. Wow. Uh, what is it? whole new terms being defined <laughs> here <laughs> on the... <laughs> this rum is great! <laughs> right? I guess that's the opposite of retro is regular, normal. Yeah, the, normal s- the normal hail? The normal hail. I have some of this uh, rum, it'll free your mind. <laughs> 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 right? So, I gave it a fight Chuck Norris. Um... What what I'm looking forward to, and if you didn't have this one, Paul, I can I can get some, so it's not a problem. Um, so so I'd be interested in your opinion. But next week, I'm stopping by the shop, and I'm gonna do the the uh, 2009. So it's it's a it's a not as aged as much uh, because it's uh, available. But I'm actually gonna do some some comparison. But this one, let me tell you something. I'm going back. 
I'm probably purchasing at least five more um, for my enjoyment, and then I'm probably going to test out the, the, the other blend, too. You big spender, you. Fight, <sighs> fight Chuck Norris, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. The small batch series has been really good. We've had debates on previous shows about which one was best. The oh. small batch number one was pretty amazing. Sure. I'm sure. Well, that, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> because after all that age, even when I smoked it a few years ago, it was probably still six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Awesome. Sweet. How's your Taurus the Bull? Taurus the Bull is good. It's good, right? It's not, I, I'm not. <laughs> it's not show friendly. No, like meaning you have to keep lighting it because of the ring. Well, either you gotta keep puffing it. That's why you hear me talking <laughs> with the cigar in my mouth. Because you gotta either gotta keep puffing on it or you gotta keep hitting it right. with the lighter. Right. Could have saved this cigar for a long-winded interview on Story Geeks, but <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know, if the if the guest was 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 long-winded for sure. Um, what else did you smoke, Ross? All right, I had the Camacho Connecticut. Wrapper, Ecuadorian Connecticut, binder, Honduran Dominican blend, and then it was uh, crafted in Honduras. Now, Honduras by itself, half of the U.S. production of cigars is from there. What made this stick great in a lot of Camachos is just that it has a great microclimate and also healthy plants, tropical climate, and just ultra-rich soil that brings out a different body of the cigar. So I kind of labeled this guy my Jeep Wrangler of cigars because it's everything that we want. If you want to smoke it in the morning when you're sick or just you want something to go with the coffee, nice, light, mellow, medium, but it still has a peppery taste. It's velvety. Mm. It's got honey. It's just dancing around, and it's not going to overpower a lot of people. So when you're a beginner and you're totally getting into this, it's something that I suggest because it's not going to just overpower everybody. Uh, I had it in the Rebuso, the 5x50. It also comes in 6x60, Toro, and Corona. Uh, I went with more of an oval because it does come in a box press. It also comes in tubes, but just straight out of the box was for me. Great taste, and it's just, you know, if you got 40 minutes and you want to have something great and tasty at a nice price point, of about six seventy five to seven dollars, it's going to be your ace in the hole every single time. Florida pricing. <laughs> what what size Axis. was yeah, what, what size was this? A Robusto? Robusto, Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yep. yep. Yeah. I I missed the Camacho Connecticut's of old. You sure. Yeah. I I, I think uh, they're just they're just not the same. Since Davidoff took them over. Yes. Dav Davidoff yep. owns yes, Camacho, right? Yep. 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 So. Before that, it, it, something changed. Cause it, it, and I can only say that about certain cigars in certain sizes. It's a very s small list, but like I can tell when something's changed in the, in the blend because I smoke so many of them. And I used to smoke Camacho Connecticut in the 1118 size. <clears throat> like it was going out of style. Man. I would just buy box after box after box. I loved... Loved, loved that cigar. Loved, missed that that size. Now I've smoked the CLE uh, Connecticut 1118. Mm. It's just, it's not the same either. Um, and I, I love Christian and I admire his work very much and makes a lot of cigars that I really do like to smoke. But that was one that I think in the transition, you know, that they had to make some changes and it just, it wasn't the same cigar for me. Uh, now that's not to say that people aren't going to like it today. I, I do, the, the, actually, I have a box of the Camacho Connecticut's in my humidor, and they're they're good. They're good. Like I th I think first thing in the morning with coffee is the uh, the only time I would personally smoke them. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think they're good, but I, I miss. And I tell you what has replaced so that Camacho Connecticut eleven eighteen um, back in the day before the Davidoff uh, purchase. That was just versatile, creamy, flavorful every single time and just the way that it burned in transition because of that size was just special uh the cigar that replaced that for me is my uh ernesto perez carrillo epc um new the wave. new wave reserva in the toro size yeah in the toro size it has a very similar now that i think about it now that you, you review the cigar rust now that i think about it similar profile to what i like you know some of the same characteristics i'll say 
as those Camacho Connecticut 1118s. I agree. The, the Camacho, when they originally released, I've always, um, I'm going back from when I was exposed to them, 2005 to like 2008 originally, I was like, wow. I was like, you know, they, they, they seem to have like a little bit of spice to them, you know. And then the, the these Connecticut's, do have a little bit of spice to them. I agree that it's 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 a pretty good smoke. Uh, I, I I agree with your assessment that you know having it in the morning uh, with coffee is is the way to go. Uh, it it does dance a little bit around on your palate, but if you're new to cigar smoking and, and that's all you've ever smoked um, from Camacho, or you're you're kind of up on the newer version of Camacho there. But if you're a a I don't want to say veteran, but if you're if you're used to the original Camacho, you you, you kind of want to go back and 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 really say, wow, you know, it's good, but it it, it wasn't what it used to be. It was what, better back then. Yeah, sure. sure. What would you give it for a rating? The it's a box split for me. A box split, yeah, yeah. I'd probably you know, but um, I don't know if you have um, access to some of the EP Creos new wave reserve there but uh true story uh today uh this week during business hours i opened up my humidor now my humidor on my desk let's face it there's probably four connecticut's in there total i i wouldn't even doubt that there's really not that much it's probably one right i actually felt you know i came into work here and i was like you know i really want like a just a milder connecticut and i actually went into paul's humidor and I've actually taken one of the new wave reservers over <gasps> this week. And I'll, and <laughs> Fair for you. It, was, it, was, it, it, was, you. it wasn't in the worst section, the, 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 the bad the F section. F off section? The F off section. It actually, should say so F off Joe. Actually, <laughs> I think, actually, I think they are now. Are they really? Yeah, so I think half of them are. Oh, you like cleaned out your humidor. It's no fun anymore. I did. I, I actually made the F off section a true F off section now. But just so you know, Stogie Geeks, even though that this request came in March or... Um, february actually it was like probably january uh we will be doing a tour of paul's humidor soon which is why he's done a uh a a a massive cleanup with that and trust me that is neat no uh <laughs> the massive cleanup was so we could find these cars oh really I thought <laughs> and then as i was cleaning it, i'm like oh you know what like when i'm done we should totally do well actually i had found both of them and i'm like you know what i'm about halfway done i'm like i'm just gonna keep at it and I did like a little each day uh, this week, um, like basically like one shelf at a, not even one shelf at a time. Like I had to just attack it. It's like Tetris, right? So I, I had to attack it and really organize it. And then I was like, well, once it's all cleaned out, we can do the segment. Yeah. So which we didn't do this week, so we'll just keep teasing it. Yeah, but I've I've had a, a, a the the Camachos and and I agree with your assessment, Paul. It's 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 not what it was uh, in the Connecticut. You really have to produce something that really stands out because of the actual blends and you know camacho uh russ gave it a box split i'd i'd probably be be box split fiver i mean, I, I i would say box split for sure you know I, I would smoke 10 over the course of the year what's of what of the camacho connecticut yeah. that's the cigar that we're reviewing right now just I will because you said the real, new wave reserve. You stole one of my new wave reserves. Oh, you're still on that. <laughs> I still a lot more I than that. Past that, I still a lot. You, dude, you have me in your office every day. I do. Whoa, whoa! You're not supposed to know about those. You know? The tenderloins. <laughs> I started off with 25, <laughs> and when I cleaned out my humidor, I did a count. Guess how many are left, Joe? Eight. 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 I know. I know exactly how many are in there. The tenderloins. <laughs> that's, that's the so do I. I'm going to be putting a camera now on the inside of my humidor <laughs> with an alert. Every time Joe pokes his face in, it's going to do facial recognition. I'm going to alert McComb and be like, Joe, put the tenderloins down. What, put it down. Did you not think that that would be like a liability on your pot? I should have taken them home. No, no, no. I'm talking about. I'm talking about like having a humidor full of stuff and having me here every day. Yeah, that's true. Did you? <laughs> did you not think that through? I, I did. Well, I created the, the f off section, but. Clearly, it, no, I never grabbed it from the uh, since it was. But in my defense, it wasn't in the F off section until like this week, and they've been hence in there. how we went from twenty five to eight. <laughs> I think Paul had two, Did you have maybe two? Th maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, right <laughs> now, Next your subject now your new co-host of Story Geese Russ, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> Joe is out. Who right? can't reach into my humanoid. <laughs> yeah. right. um, I had the Liga Pravada Dirty Rat. Awesome stick. Dirty. I, 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 I uh, The size was a Corona. It's a 5x44. You have a Connecticut River Valley stalk cut with sun-cured grown Habano. That's in the wrapper. Your binder is plantation-grown Brazilian Maltafina. Maltafina. What? Maltafina. Thank you. Not Maltafina. Malta. Malta's a different country. <laughs> <laughs> Drink some rum, Joe. Right. And your filler is a is Nicaraguan and Honduras. And it's as soon as you in my opinion, I love the Nicaraguan Honduran combo. Even in, in with you know, another cigar. Those dirty rats taste better if you wear in Liga Provada sneakers. <laughs> Just saying it enhances <laughs> Ross, the <laughs> flavor. <laughs> Listen, there's so many others. Like you can get the T fifty twos. You can't copy my swag. The T fifty two I think it's got like this rainbow sl- style graffiti all over it. So Are they flip flops? Are they flip flops? I, I actually have Avo Ritmo flip flops. Oh. I didn't get Avo flip flops. Oh wow. Dang. Yeah. Look they- it up. It was attention Joseph Hosempa of Stogie Geeks. Uh, <laughs> I have Avo Ritmo flip flops. They're pretty cool. Uh, How did they, they know your size? No, no, no. I actually got those uh, from uh, uh, um, my friend up at Queensbury. Oh, back oh. They, they had a Avo swag bag and mm. stuff, and then the owner just stuffed a bunch of cigars when Dan came on the show, and and they were Avo flip flops, and they're pretty cool. You know. They How come s- you're not wearing them today, oh, Joe? Um. I, I like these for flops to to wear, to wear out. I don't know. Uh, I'll wear them next time. Um, but anyway, you just answered your question actually. Actually, no. Brixton and Mash with the Ritmo. That thing will be all over the place. That, that'd be, yeah, right. If you have the Bricks and a Mash with, with, with the Avo Ritmo cigar, you'll be you'll be like on overload. It's too much stuff going on. Not only in the cigar, but in the Bricks and Mash. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, do you have those sneakers on now, Ross? No, actually, I'm wearing my. Uh, Blue suede shoes. Picked them up in Memphis. Of course. Why not? Why, why, why wouldn't you, right? Why not while walking <laughs> in Memphis? Right. There you go. I, I was going to say he's wearing his yeah, EPC dress shoes. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, all these people are gonna making shoes now. What is going on? Say, I didn't get any shoes. Say, man, they're making some damn good swag in Florida. And all. We're getting shoes. stickers up here in the yeah. Northeast. You know, no, well, we, did, we got booze. Yeah, we got booze. but We got know. the ashtray. Yeah, we got the ashtray. You know. We can't complain, Joe. <laughs> Ashtray is not portable. You take it to like a cookout. Yeah, it's definitely not portable. <laughs> um, getting back to the Liga Pravada Dirty Rat format was a Corona. It's a five by forty four. Oh, uh, we're supposed to be reviewing cigars. Yes, that's what we're doing. Oh. Uh, complexity, uh, I gave it complexity, flavor, and balance. I gave it all eights. The main flavors are uh, spicy earth with some pepper. Towards the end, I get some dark chocolate and a little bit of cedar and. Really, when you sm- this is one of those cigars if, if you you can smoke it to the nub, especially if you if you use your Calibri uh, deep V cutter, um, for sure you can smoke it down to the nub. If you're able to get there, um, you get. A, Did you smoke yours down to the nub? Uh, it's right down to the nub. It was an awesome stick. Um, it's it's uh, creamy and smooth, and um, right towards the end it picks it picks up on a little spice as opposed to getting too ashy sometimes. That's how you can tell, like, a, a, a good stick, in my opinion, when you smoke it down to the nub and it doesn't get ashy. You your like, nub shouldn't get ashy. <laughs> don't make – make sure your nub's not ashy. That being said, <laughs> these sticks are – I don't want to say they're hard to come by, but if you're a retailer, there's certain tier levels that you get. So I don't like sending Stogie Geeks listeners on a wild goose chase. Yeah, rats are easier to find now than they were back in the day. Sure, you know, but I, I, I'm. There is a tier system that you must follow, right? Yes, and and then from there. So with that being said, I gave it a box split with a friend because if you split, the, if you're able to find a box and you get them, you you know, if you have a close friend and whatnot, definitely split it. No, it's, definitely it's, keep them to yourself. It's a, it's a great stick. And he, I bought a box several years ago, actually. I kept you, it to myself. Well, didn't bit. share with a friend. You should start sharing cigars with a friend. Not now. No, I already have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my assessment of the stick. Russ, move on to your next right. stick. Let's keep this moving. <laughs> All right. So, the Kentucky Fire Cure. Mm. You know, he did it again. 
Jonathan Drew came up with a whole process different than what normally takes for curing pr tobacco. You know, you could do it one way with the air and just doing it in an open barn, but when you cure it, it only takes three days instead of eight weeks. So if you're putting more product out there and it's delicious, it's a double win. Uh, going on about that, I did have it in the Fat Molly. Mm -hmm. It's a filler that's a secret recipe right there. The binder's Nicaraguan, and the wrapper was a San Andreas. It comes in a lot of different sizes. Uh, ham, ham hock, coyotes, and also... I think that's all I got right. Oh, it's best described, actually, as a big girl with big flavor. And it does live up to that. I did have it with a nice, neat tin cup bourbon, and it was just great flavors. It really brought out everything, and it was creative. I got cedar notes. I got toasted oak and a little bit of earth flavor. And for his profiles, it was just something new, something different, mm. but it was still another smash hit. I definitely say you've got to go pick one up smoke it any time during the day and the sizes definitely are just enjoyable you can smoke it for an hour or you can get like a coyotes kind of land 5 by 25 by 34 make it nice and quick so it's enjoyable for the time that it has and I gotta say that it's gonna be sticking around because it's a winner and I gave it a box mm. it's worthy one of the because pardon no, no yeah it was a the price point of just, you know, six seventy five. It was perfect. So, mm. got to pick it up for that price. Florida pricing. <laughs> mm. I, I like the I like the Kentucky Fire Cured uh, with Bloody Marys. Yeah. Well, I was yeah sure. I'm, Bloody Marys plural. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I was also I was also going with you know it, 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 each size smokes differently with the Kentucky Fire Cured. We've had the little, little thin ones. Yeah. Then we've had the kind of Robusto ones, which is kind of where where we, we stand, I think, with, with the Bloody Marys and up. Yeah. You know, uh, I've never smoked it in, in some of the bigger. The small ones were pretty intense. Yeah, but there wasn't, if if you recall, the, the, there wasn't enough uh, smoke on the palate yeah. from the smoke yeah. ones. Which, yeah, I like which, the larger ring gauge, yep. uh, actually. And I, I tell you what, if it, the first time I smelled that cigar pre-lit, I was like, good Lord, I don't know if I can smoke this. Like, sure. Oh, my God, it's overwhelming to your senses. But I tell you what, when you light it up and smoke it, you, you don't get those that same flavor from the pre-lit. Um, it, it's certainly not as intense. Uh, it's a lot more subtle. It smokes more like a, a non-infused or non-flavored cigar mm -hmm. uh, than I thought, certainly, uh, which will be interesting to smoke. <clears throat> what is the new one from Nick Melillo? That was in, uh, infused with the, the, the scotch. Oh, boy. I have I them in there. They're in the bottom left-hand drawer. Yeah, they're in a little felt, yeah, like, like kilt like thing. Middle thing. I know exactly. I know where my oh, shit I is now. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, they're in my review drawer, uh, and I'm, I'm excited about those. I don't remember what he called it, though. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Yeah, we, I, I didn't have that one yet, but even, even when you smell that one at first, you're, you're, you're a little bit skeptical. I know when I... Was was first introduced to the Kentucky Fire Cured. Uh, I kind of shied away from it for a while, and then uh, we actually did a pairing with it. And um, I do know that some of the guys next door actually pair that with like some sort of drink concoction with cream soda. With a Kentucky Fire Cured. Yeah, and the and and I've actually had it, and Jeez. it's it's it it's really oh high high clear castle. Okay. Is his one that is inf infused with scotch somehow? Mm -hmm. It got uh, a pretty decent rating too. Yeah, so the High Clare Castle uh, hand rolled in Nicaragua using Connecticut shade wrapper, uh, Criollo and Corojo from the volcanic soils of Jalapa uh, and the island of Ometepe. Uh, the binder's Matafina, um, and the new blend is finalized with an exclusive hybrid seed. The company is named Nicod. Nicodon, Nicodion. Uh, the resulting smoke is smooth. Uh, get this: notes of pepper, citrus, leather, and fireplace. Mm. Did you have that one yet? 
Uh, I have not. Oh, wait. So this is the, his new Connecticut. I'm sorry, right? This is not the one uh, that is infused. I did smoke the High Clear Castle. Uh, I, I don't remember which size I smoked. It might have been the Robusto. Um, and I really liked it. I, I'm not ready to give it a full rating yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was really good because I smoked it when I was smoking some other. I smoked like a Padron Connecticut and then I was going back to this one. I, so my, my palate was all messed up. Not going to give it a rating yet. Uh, I do have more samples to smoke in the next week's show. I'll, I'll report back on the uh, the high clear. Ca- I really li- I like this cigar a lot, uh, which is uh, Nick's uh, Connecticut shade. But I thought Nick did a special one with the. Uh, in- was that him that did the one with the infused? G- just go- I'm gonna just keep talking. I'm gonna go get. It. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. So Russ, any any other comments you want to make on the Kentucky Fire Cured? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any, any other comments you want to make on that? Yeah, you can try it with a Coke. You can try it in the mornings, afternoons. That's usually one of my go-to sticks. Mm. I just got to say, I can't wait till he comes up with like a bourbon color type of sneaker I can pick up. So <laughs> There you go. Let me ask you this. Uh, do you find out when you smoke those? And then, Paul, the, the, the question. What are you doing? I'm an idiot. The, 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 the question I have is, um, do you find out when you smoke those, you can smoke the same stick and you kind of get like a... Depending on where your your palate is and whatnot, you you you, you kind of get uh, a a different um, a different experience when 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 you do the Kentucky Fire Cured. Yes, I do find that with the different sizes, I might pick up like a little bit of vanilla actually in it, mm-hmm. but also just the taste. Like one will just be so strong and it got like that extra hickory smoke to it, mm. and the other one just was on the left side when all the smoke was blown to the right side. And that's just something that you do when you're firing up the coals and letting them all dry out. But I think that might be one of the reasons why. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Paul, did you get your cigar or do you want me to keep talking? This is the the Kalinoch Scottish Peat Fired Cigar. Um, So the cigar is uh, created by harvesting Scottish, Scottish peat by hand using the same tools that have been deployed for hundreds of years. The resulting side is then left to dry in the open air for two weeks. The dried peat is then packaged and shipped to the Dominican. Then in a special curing pot process, the peat is married into tobaccos that are utilized in the Kalinoch. 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 And this was a cigar I, that you had that was all over, like you... you. Uh, who makes this cigar, though? I thought it was Nick. <laughs> but... The maybe it's not maybe it's hammer and sickle. What was no? Your, it's hammer what? and sickle. Sorry. Okay. Hammer and sickle. What was your rating on the Kentucky Fire Cured? So we can wrap that up. I gave it a full box because of the price point plus yeah. the flavor. Yeah. Oh, if I'm smoking two a day, of course I'm gonna have to buy the whole box. Sure. Gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, so sorry. This is hammer and sickle. So Nick did do one that was. Uh, uh, had a Scottish uh, kind of theme to it, or their English kind of theme to it, uh, British theme to it, I should say. And so, anyway. Okay. I've been drinking. Is there anything else? <laughs> Try the rum. That's the that's the bottom line. Any other? Any other? It'll thoughts? free your mind. Any other smokes you've been smoking, Paul? I have one more. I think Russ has one more too. <clears throat> uh, go for it, guys. Okay. Russ, go for it. Yeah, go. Yeah, go for right it. Right on. Be- before my phone dies and I lose you guys, don't yeah, want to have another incident. Bada bing. The PLM, David P. Ehrlich, and MLB Cigar Ventures. Now, this stick is fantastic. It came in five sizes. Mm. Uh, Corona, Robusto, Toro, Gordo, and a Churchill. Wrapper was a San Andreas Maduro. Filler, Nicaraguan and Dominican. The binder, Nicaraguan. Started at the underground. Know you guys are big fans of that. So is Bellity. Yeah. Uh, quick story right there. Five years ago, met Bellity. I'm sorry. One of a, I'm a sorry. Guitar, stuff like that. <laughs> and I was listening to him because he knew his stuff and, you know, it just wasn't in my palate. I thank him for this cigar. Mm. And I even went with a 6 by 60 I don't go big size. It's usually the same with a Robusto. This had chocolate, espresso. It was medium to my palate. It tasted like earth. 
and it was aged right, it was done right, and I got to tell you, like, Bellity hit a home run with this one, and I'm so excited by it. Uh, it came in at eleven dollar and seventy five price point. And just the I'll history say it, of these Florida two guys. Pricing. No, actually, he got down in Rhode Island. Oh, I guess it's Florida pricing. You gotta say it with your hand. Oh, it's Florida you pricing. It really. Yeah, go ahead, Ross. But uh, you know, like the tradition, I smoked the Tremont. That was pretty good too. Mm. But uh, just this Mexican San Andreas, so awesome. Yeah, it brings it to a whole nother level, and it's gonna dominate. So if you guys can get your hands on them, this is a box for me. Solid. We might and know a guy. Yeah, I'm an MLB guy now. So yeah, let me tell you something. Swag Mike. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've I've uh, had a history with MLB Cigar Ventures, uh, even pre Stogie Geeks, and you know I've always kind of gravitated to some of his smaller sizes. Yeah, the the Peter or the Robusto, maybe the Toro, and then he has a, a kind of exclusive size. It's called the Funtador, and obviously that's his best size. Yeah, I I think that's his best size for sure. Um, with there, but with the David Pierre, like he did that also in conjunction with Bar uh, Barry McDonald, whose original family uh, used to own the David P. Ehrlich store up in uh, Boston, and that's actually how they came up with Tremont because it 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 was it was over on Tremont Street, and then um, when they created the David P. Ehrlich again, I still shied towards the either Peter size or the Robusto size. Then uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Bellity and Barry in studio where they launched the uh, PLM series. I know that that was on Stogie Geeks. That was the June 22nd episode there, so a couple where weeks ago. Where was I for that? I don't know. You, you, Somewhere. You, you weren't here. But it was June 22nd. It was, it was a Friday. Well, duh, Stogie Geeks, right? And then so um, when I had it for the show, <laughs> they actually gave it to me in the Churchill size. And you know, I I I I I had it in my original. Yeah, take you know, it was free, so I smoked it. No, my original <laughs> takeaway was, wow, it, it it smokes different from the Tremont, you know, because MLB, you 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 have MLB, and then you have like in under the MLB un umbrella, you right. have the David Pierlek. So that's with his projects that he's doing with Barry McDonald, and from there, like the Tremont, it's a good smoke. No, there's no question, it's a good smoke. But that PLM series with that, uh, what was it? A Mexican San Andreas Maduro? Yep. Yeah. The Mexican San Andreas Maduro, I actually said to Barry on the show, I says, you, you know how you have, say, a red wine, and, okay, it kind of tastes wet on your palate, and then you can have another version of a red wine, and it tastes dry on your palate. What I like about the uh, David P. Ehrlich PLM series is that it's drier on the palate, which really brings out the nuances of what is going on into the binder and the filler, because it's the same blend, it's just a different wrapper. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. And then from there, you know, uh, it when it got released, I was like, wow, it's bringing out those actual nuances. And and I agree. Like you know, you you could tell like, okay, the Tremont was the first smoke. And then you have the second smoke, and it's a step up. And then I do know that with MLB, there is some other stuff coming down the uh, pike as well. So, you know, and, and then as he keeps making those, those blends, it just keeps getting better and better. And what's he have? One, two, three, four, five, six now. Um, so from there, uh, you know, it, 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 it's just going to get better and better. And you gave it a box worthy? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All I've, day. I've already burned through half, uh, half a box, and uh, definitely uh, uh, I didn't rate it yet for the show, but um, I, I I would definitely be it would definitely be a higher rating as well. I would agree. Right on. Cool, cool. Uh, um, the last stick I want to talk about today is the uh, protocol. Uh, I had a Toro. It was. Did you get those from my humidor? Yeah, I so yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was just going to say, <laughs> when yeah. I cleaned up my humidor, I found a whole stash of, of those. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And I was excited to smoke them, and now Joe smoked them for me. I had a Toro. It's a 6x52. You have an Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper. You have a Nicaraguan Habano binder. And it also includes quadruple Lajero. That's four. Thank you. <laughs> 
You have four quadruple. <laughs> you have quadruple quadruple Lahero, which hails from Jalapa, Esteli. Did I say Jalapa right? You did. All right. I said Esteli right too. I'm getting better. See, it only took like three years, right? So now complexity with this stick, I gave it a seven, but flavor and balance, I gave it an eight. Delivers a mix of chocolate with some natural tobaccos, r the natural tobacco flavor right out of the gate. Uh, it's a medium strength stick for sure. Uh, at any experience of a uh, cigar smoker, it's a true medium. The price point is completely amazing with this stick, which I kind of like. Like when, you know, I, I mean, I come from a time when, you know, uh, the regular classic facings were more expensive than the boutiques. And now we seem to be in a time where the boutiques are kind of more expensive than the classic facings. That's another argument for another show in regards to business methodology. However, with this stick here, the price point is really, really good. You get a natural, natural tobacco flavor. Um, slight pepper. Uh, it, it, was, it, wasn't, it, was, it, it was not overwhelming in, in the pepper department, but it was really, really good. Smoked that thing down right down to the nub. Gave it a, a deep V cut by our friends over at Calibri. Did your nub get ashy? And yes, I, I made sure it did not get ashy towards the end. But I gave it a box split, you know, because I, I would definitely, you know, um, pick up some of these cigars for sure. Uh, great, uh, it it's a great stick to have within your lineup. Now you've had some of these, correct? With the blue pea. No? Yes, yeah, I have. The Lanceros are pretty awesome. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, there's a regular line. I mean, we've had them on the show before. It's, it, they've done a fantastic job of making a small boutique cigar. Mm. In the price point. Yeah. Like, like, like if yeah, yeah. It's, that, that's, that I think it's is. Good, strong cigars, too. It lets you know it's there, mm -hmm. for sure. And, and, and I like that line. Although they have a Connecticut now, too, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. A, red, it's a red label. Is it red? Gold. I thought it was gold. But okay, maybe okay. it's gold. Yeah. You know, um, have you had that rust down there on your neck of the woods or no? I haven't seen the protocol yet, no. But it sounds like it's going to definitely be on my radar, and as soon as I do, yeah, I'm picking that up. I haven't seen them too much here in shops. Um, quite. It really just Joyles. Yeah, probably. Is that Joyles is one of the few shops that I've seen carry them. But mm -hmm. Yeah, I raided Paul's Humidor and, and grabbed one and... and I was like, ooh, I'm going to talk about this on the show. So that, that's what I have. I gave that it drawer on the left above the humidification device is all review sticks. Uh, Paul's review sticks? Or? Well, I mean, whoever gets to them first, review sticks. How about that? I think we should do the F off. As long off. as you smoke it, you can smoke. You just got to review it. I think we should review the F off section first and then get no. to it. <laughs> no. <laughs> the F off section is the F off. <laughs> He's going to have like a lockbox. I'm going to have to lock it. Finger, like a fingerprint code or something. Something. Maybe. Cameras. Yubi key. It's gonna shock it. Get a Yubi key for it. It's gonna it. tase you if you <laughs> go to the F off section. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. That's it. Well, Russ, thank you so much for appearing on the Stogie Geek Show. It's nice having you. I know it's hot there, so Yeah, man. Why don't you just uh, take cool down? Take off those just headphones like that. and put on those uh what are they? Slip or uh, Liga Pavada slippers? Sneakers. Sneakers. And get, get in some AC, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Have a great one. Thanks a lot. Thanks, yep. Russ. Take care. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. We'll see you next time.